Angelina Jolie had a family history. Obviously, her mother um, had been uh, impacted by ovarian cancer, and she passed from that disease. And based on that high risk of having a family history, she sought out to stratify her risk. Where did she fall in regards to risk for developing breast, ovarian, and related cancers? When we start that discussion with our patients, we oftentimes try to pull in that affected individual. So if we're having um, a risk counseling session and we do opt to test the family, we prefer to test the affected individual. Individual. There's a percentage of women who, when you go through all of their options, so there's screening, there's preventive medications, and then there's obviously preventive surgery, it really takes a, an internal cost benefit ratio that they have to really talk through. So it requires us to provide them with information that's accurate. Um, we don't ever make a decision for them, we just help them process that information. And about 30% of women like Angelina would go ahead and have both of their breasts removed. How do you handle stressful information or risk in your life in general? And for a lot of women knowing you have this elevated risk knowing that um, you know every day you're going to be thinking about it that's a lot of weight for a lot of women to handle so knowing you can take that risk from greater than 50 percent and for some women obviously that goes up into the high 80s you can reduce that risk down to less than 10 percent and if you're going to a dedicated breast surgeon that risk is probably closer to five percent so when you compare that to general statistics you're much lower than the general population by removing that breast tissue most of the patients we see fit into a high risk category and that's about a, a 15 to 50 percent lifetime risk of developing breast cancer only a small subset of patients would actually fit into a hereditary risk like Angelina and that means that they've tested positive to uh, a genetic test in particular the ones that were looked at for her were called BRCA1 and BRCA2 but there's other genes out there that we look for as well and most of the patients we see obviously in a high-risk clinic don't fall into a, a general or sporadic risk but let's say that in, in a family like Angelina's her mother had tested positive we tested her and she was negative she would actually get to go down into a lower risk category so the only way we can really take a high-risk woman and reduce her risk is by understanding what that genetic test would tell us. Things have changed a lot. Uh, we used to uh, primarily do blood testing, but now we do things called buckle samples, and that basically we like to use uh, sort of easy, easy things to understand, uh, which is you sort of swoosh and spit. So it's collecting cheek cells uh, by taking a mouthwash and swooshing it around in the mouth, and then you collect it into a tube. That tube is then sent to a testing company, and the DNA is actually extracted from the cheek cells. Um, they're the same DNA, our, our DNA is the same no matter where we really collect that from. So this has been a much easier way so that especially if we have women who um, are unaffected, we don't have to send them for a blood draw anymore. They can simply have a spit test done. The gene testing looks for two genes called BRCA1 and BRCA2. And these are called tumor suppressor genes. And the way I like to explain them to a patient is it's sort of like you have a highway patrolman who's supposed to cruise down the highway and identify those speeders. But if he's stuck on the side of the road, the speeders are going to keep going by. So tumor suppressors are supposed to stop abnormal cells or cancer cells from growing. And if the mechanism in our body isn't working the way it's supposed to, then those cells will continue to grow uncontrolled. So the important piece is not just just to look at the family history, but we want to look at the individual. Because for a lot of patients where there is a negative test, they still have risk. And if you think about some of the other risk factors, the biopsy, having babies later in life or not having babies, um, lots of hormonal factors. When did you start your period? When did you go through menopause? All those factors are very ind independent to the individual. So regardless of what else we see in the family history, there's a lot of things that can be individual to the person as well.